Hey, good morning, everybody. Jeff Slakey and Spencer Hughes here on the Daybreak Show, and I'm happy to have from PUD1, Kristen Masteller on the line with me. Good morning. Good morning, Jeff. Thanks for being here and uh, updating us on things happening in PUD1. We talked with the folks at PUD3 uh, last week, and while I know you're both in Mason County and you both work closely together, there are some uh, unique qualities to both uh, public utility districts. And first, let's just get an overview about how uh, PUD1 has been handling the last few months and what it's looked like for changes uh, for the for the crew that are, you know, still needed to be out there in front of people at times. Yeah, we um, closed our offices to the public early um, on in this thing because there's not very many of us here. There's only 25 of us. We don't have a large bench to pull from if somebody does get sick. So our primary focus was to make sure that um, the essential water and power services remained operable for the public. And the only way to really guarantee that is to keep our, our employees safe. And so right off the bat, we closed to the public and we staggered shifts where we had a a group A and a group B and they rotated in um, working and then one group would stay home and work from home and then they would swap the next week. So that way, if if one shift had a positive case, they wouldn't wipe out the entire workforce. Right. Um, And so we brought almost everybody back this month to the building. I have some folks that are out um, that are in the high risk category that are still working from home, but mostly um, all of our crew members are back and our customer service and finance folks are back. We're just working split shifts with an early shift and a late shift. How has uh, PUD1 and the employees and and even from the commissioners down uh, adopted and and accepted kind of this telework model Mm -hmm. for many of the folks I've interviewed over these last couple months? I think all of us have, uh, you know, two and a half months ago or three months ago, if we would have said, okay, well, guess what? Everybody in your office is going to have to telework. Most people would say, listen, there's no way. Right. I, you know, we can't even do a lot of the stuff in person uh, when it comes to things. There's, how are we going to telework? Uh, how has it worked for PUD? One. It's worked better than I thought it would. It took us a couple different tries of um, figuring things out to find a, a routine that works well for us. You know, we tried things, they didn't work, we tweaked them, we tried something different. And now we've got it where um, people are pretty self-sufficient as far as being able to remote in. A lot of it boils down to technology and many of us in Mason County, me included, live in rural areas where we don't have access to high-speed internet. Like I have satellite internet, so I can't um, work from home very well. So we've just kind of adapted it. We've done this kind of hybrid model of folks that can work full-time from home and people that can come into the office to grab work to take home and do it the old-fashioned way on paper. Um, And so, yeah, we really, you know, six months ago, if you had told me that I would have had operations people working from home, I would have thought you were crazy. But, you know, we do what we have to do. We do whatever we have to do to keep it working. And I will say, you know, our commissioners are all calling in on Zoom meetings now, and we have all that information on our website. And if anything, it's increased access, you know, to the public um, meetings because folks can do it from the comfort of their own homes now. If they have a telephone, then they can call in and listen to the board meeting. So some things I think have actually worked out for the better surprisingly. One of the things that you have, um, we, we've talked about in, in leading up to this interview are some ways that uh, people not only in PUD1, but PUD3 too, can find some assistance when it comes to their their energy and their water, water bills. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, Governor Inslee uh, had several proclamations that he extended, and one of them included um, a moratorium on utility disconnects. And so there's a couple really important things that I think um, we need to continue to put out there to our ratepayers is um, those bills can't be forgiven. We're public agencies, so we can't write those off because that would be considered a gift of public funds, which is illegal. So the, the water and the power bills are still due when the moratorium's lifted, which is set for the end of August. And what we're trying to avoid is have customers who are thousands of dollars in arrears on their account and can't bring their account current because if they're not making payment arrangements, um, you know, September 1st, 
that that utility bills do and we don't want anybody to be disconnected we don't want to have an interruption in utility services and we've said that right from the start before the governor took any action we um, implemented um, a suspension of our electric rate increase for the year we implemented a suspension of um, late fees disconnections the whole nine yards and started reaching out we personally hand dial every one of our um, customers who are on the late account list and say you know what's going on with you this month um, how are things going do you need Need some time do you want to set up a payment plan so what we're encouraging and I can't speak for PD3 but I know they do this too they're very effective at it is they um, set up long-term payment plans for people so my message really is you know don't ignore us we're here to help you or you know if you're getting phone calls or letters about um, strategizing how to get your accounts current take advantage of that that's what our customer service folks are there for and secondly um, the Community Action Council of Mason County and then Ole Cap in Jefferson County because um, we have about 1500 customers in Jefferson County um, these organizations got you know there's over seven million dollars that got um, filtered through Department of Commerce that's supposed to go out to the to the county level and assist with um, rent and utility bills. So we are just pounding the pavement on this, trying to get our, our customers to make an appointment down at the CAC and see if they qualify. And even if they didn't qualify in the past, um, now with the COVID um, unemployment, they're kind of loosening their threshold for who qualifies for this assistance. So they might qualify now, even if they didn't qualify before. So we're really encouraging everybody, just make the phone call. They're taking appointments. Um, June is when the water uh, assistance comes through also. And so we really want that money to come into Mason County to help PUD1 and PUD3 rate payers, but also it helps support the continued operation of the public utility district. You know, we still have to pay our power bill to bond yeah. bill. So it's important that our, our customers know where to go to get some assistance. I've talked with uh, different credit unions around our area over this course of this, and they kind of are saying the same things. Um, you may, you may dread calling um, something mm -hmm. like this, you know, for fear, even if you're paid up, you just never know. And you, you feel like, Oh, well now something might happen, but it's really important to let people know that you are struggling as opposed to, especially now, as opposed to a month or two down the road as we get closer to August and, and then you haven't heard anything from someone. So perhaps right. just assuming everything's normal, but for those folks, it's been a tough thing. You know, they've had to then, it's, I guess it's hard for them to then make the payments or, right. or, yeah. you know, you don't want to get kicked off of these things. Sure. Well, and you know, I, I took a look down the list um, last week, and we have some customers that, you know, in the last 90 days are up to $2,000 behind on their bills. And, you know, that's hard to come come back from, especially if you ha are, you know, experiencing job insecurity or borderline homelessness. It's, it's difficult to come back from that. And what we're trying to communicate to our customers is nobody's had to go through something like this before. We're all um, adjusting and there's absolutely no shame in saying, I need help right now. We, we work for these people. The, you know, we work for these customers. It's our job to try to find a way to to come up with a solution to help keep their essentially utility services connected and then help them bring everything current so they're not struggling with it. You know, one thing I have noticed with uh, the public utility districts for, for certain and credit unions for certain kind of the member mantra yeah. of these things, uh, they, they definitely feel and care for their members. And, and I know you do for your ratepayers. And Absolutely. you know, we're all trying to get through this together. I'll put the links to the Community Action Council's uh, phone numbers and websites on this. Also for Oli Cap for the folks in Jefferson County. And, um, you know, when you guys continue to uh, have news or get ready to reopen, let's get you back on and we'll talk about some more of this stuff. Thank you. Yeah, we hope to reopen this month. We're waiting for some renovations to occur in our lobby area with some plexiglass to help protect our customer service reps. Um, we will be requiring masks if you want to do your business in person at the front counter. Um, but, you know, 
we've been running over the phone and online for the last three months and we haven't skipped a beat. You know, yeah. people are still getting a good level of service. So if somebody feels strongly that they don't want to wear a mask, they can continue to call us or do their business online. But the folks that want to come back in, we'll have masks available for people that don't have their own. And we're looking forward to seeing our rate pairs again. Very cool. Kristen, good to see you. Good to talk with you this morning. And uh, we'll continue to check in with all the great work PUD1 does for folks in Mason and Jefferson counties. Great. Thank you, Jack. Thank you.